Inform Choice Radio, episode 500, The Art of a Successful Life, with Dr. Rainer Zeitelman. Live, Live from Sundial House Studios, this is Informed Choice Radio. Radio. Want to make the most of your money and your life? You've, You've come, come to, to the, the right, right place. place. Now, here's your host, your host. Martin Bamford. The German poet Theodor Fontaine once wrote, a good aphorism contains the wisdom of an entire book in one sentence. In his new book, The Art of a Successful Life, Dr. Rainer Zeitelman goes a step further, collecting a myriad of quotes, all of which offer insights to inspire you to think about yourself, your life and your goals, and to give you the confidence and strength to cope with difficult situations. Rayner has created quotes from a range of thinkers, from the physicist Stephen Hawking to the artist Michelangelo, and from entrepreneurs such as Henry Ford, Steve Jobs and Warren Buffett, to Confucius and Schopenhauer. In bringing them together, he provides an original and practical guide to everyday life. In this conversation, I chat with Rayner about looking for opportunities in times of crisis, why failure isn't all it's cracked up to be, and how we can apply the wisdom from others in our daily lives. Here's my conversation with Dr. Reynolds Eitelman, author of The Art of a Successful Life, in episode 500 of Informed Choice Radio. Rainer, welcome back to Informed Choice Radio. It's lovely, as always, to chat to you. And today we're talking about your one of your new books called The Art of a Successful Life. So firstly, t- tell us about the book. Um, how did it come about? What's it all about? Yes, I collected uh, more than 200 quotes from 2,500 years. And the funny thing is, uh, before I wrote the book, I dreamed it at night to write exactly this kind of book. And then I woke up. I remember it was a Saturday morning. And then I started uh, immediately. I said, uh, what is the idea behind the book? Um, I collected these quotes from very different people, from uh, philosophers like uh, uh, Cicero or Schopenhauer, for example, to entrepreneur like uh, uh, Henry Ford or Steve Jobs and uh, uh, I think some, for some people, it's a little bit, it's, it sounds a little bit crazy if they have their one page a quote from a German poet and author, Goethe, and on the next page you find a quote from Arnold Schwarzenegger. But uh, in a way, it reflects my my own life because, uh, you know, I did a lot of different things. On the one hand, I'm a historian and I'm a, a sociologist. And on the other hand, uh, I'm an investor and I've been an uh, um, uh, entrepreneur as well. And so uh, I think uh, if we speak about wisdom, we don't have only wisdom with uh, philosophers and, and uh, authors. Yes, sure, we have, but we have as well wisdom from people like uh, Steve Jobs and so on. So the, the funny subtitle of the book is uh, the, the, the knowledge uh, from uh, Confucius uh, to uh, Steve Jobs here. And, uh, and I, I did not only um, select these quotes from 2,500 years, but uh, I added uh, comments. Uh, what does it mean for your life? And these are uh, 20, 20 chapters. And uh, I think it's not a book that someone should uh, read from uh, first uh, page to the to the last uh, page. But it's uh, more something you can uh, uh, work with. Maybe we can speak later about it. Or you can uh, sometimes read in this book and uh, think about things because these are 20 very different uh, sectors of life. It's from uh, how to get rich or how to be good in sales, but as well about your uh, 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 health. And uh, so uh, uh, a lot of different topics. And I think I'm not smarter than all these uh, people in 2,500 years. Definitely, I'm not. And so uh, there's a lot of wisdom in, in all these quotes. And uh, this was the idea when I wrote this book. And I particularly like the fact that you've written some commentary, some interpretation against each comment, each quote, because quotes mean different things to different people, don't they? When we read a quote from somebody like Steve Jobs, we, depending on our own life experience, we may put a different slant on it, a different take on it. So, so your, your commentary on it, I think, is particularly helpful as you read through the book. 
Yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, even for me, it is so if I read the same quote uh, today, or maybe five or 10 years later, uh, it's uh, as well true for me what you say that I have different uh, thoughts. And because maybe in the meantime, I have new experience. And I see another thing in this uh, quote, uh, as, I, as I did before. No, absolutely. So, so you collected 200 plus quotes. I'm sure you've collected many more during your career, but how did you whittle down those quotes to the ones that you wanted to feature in the book, the ones that had the biggest meaning for you when it came to the art of a successful life? It was not so much about who said this. In some cases, it's even difficult uh, to say because sometimes you have a quote that, uh, that sounds uh, very similar and uh, there's one source that claims uh, uh, it's... Uh, uh, First, uh, f first, it was said by him, and th there's another uh, source with an uh, with another. But this was not so important for me. For me, it was more important the the content of this uh, quote. No, absolutely. And, and you've managed to um, put them into, as you said, a number of different chapters about different areas of a successful life. So, how did you establish that framework for what contributes to a successful life? I think this is this 20 chapters they don't reflect all things that are necessary for a successful life. I will you give you one example. There's one very important aspect you can find no chapter in this book and this is about family because uh, I, I don't have a family. Sure, I have parents and sisters, but uh, I, I have no wife and no uh, children. So I think I would be the wrong person to tell you something about uh, family life. It's, uh, it's only about uh, fields of life where I have as well something to say, my own experience, like uh, success in life or like how to get rich or about uh, The, the art of uh, self-marketing. Uh, And uh, so for me, it was uh, important that, uh, that I have uh, as well uh, experience, that, that I have the feeling that I have to say something uh, to, to people. No, that, that makes perfect sense. Now, now, lots of quotes in the book, but is there a standout favorite, maybe one or two favorites that you'd like to highlight from those quotes? One favorite quote, it's uh, by uh, Michelangelo, the Italian uh, artist and architect. And uh, this quote is, uh, the greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. And this is, for example, very important for me because um, I think it is very important for your life to have high goals and, uh, and ambitious goals. And uh, I, I I think it's very rare that people set themselves uh, goals that are uh, unrealistic too high, but it's much more often the case that people think something is not realistic. Or um, I, I think if, if people would, uh, would set their goals much higher, this is an important precondition to be successful in life. And uh, mm. sometimes I ask myself, uh, why are so many people who don't try to, to reach out for higher goals? And I think it's because they have fear that they uh, could fail. But if you don't try, you, you, you even have failed uh, be, be, before you have tried. If you try, there's a possibility and opportunity that you can reach your goal. But if you don't try to reach your goal, then you're already failed. And, and I think that there's another quote in this book that is important for me. Even failure is not a bad thing. For, uh, it, maybe it sounds a little bit uh, a paradox for you, but someone who never failed in his whole life, he's complete loser for me. Maybe that sounds strange for you, but I can tell you why. Uh, look, I give you an example. Uh, I go always to the, uh, to the gym, you know, with, uh, with weights. And for example, if I, if I do this bench press, let's take it an uh, example, and I take a barbell with maybe, uh, for example, 80 kilo 
and I can uh, move it uh, eight times, for example, then I know I, I, I can't fail because uh, I know this, uh, this weight is uh, what, what I always can lift, uh, lift up. But I will not grow when I always take mm -hmm. only this weight. Maybe I have to add some weight, maybe 90 kilo, 100 or even 110. And if I try so, there will be some some sets where, where I'm not able to lift uh, the weight. Maybe someone has to, uh, has to help me. But if you never go to your limit, you will not find out what is your true potential. And um, so I think failure is not such a bad thing. All uh, uh, famous uh, people and successful uh, people in the world, uh, s sometimes they failed even great investors like uh, uh, Warren Buffett or people like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I quote him very often. Even this paper, uh, people fail sometimes in life. And the, the, the problem is not whether you fail or not, but how you react if you, if mm. you fail. And I think this is, a, uh, this is uh, maybe this is the reason why people don't aim for, for higher goals. I, I think when we are young children, a lot of children, they have uh, higher goals. If you ask them about their uh, profession in the future, maybe they want to be famous football star or, or famous uh, models or whatever or to get super rich. And then uh, their parents and their teacher, maybe they tell them, oh, for, 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 forget about it. Be more realistic. And realistic means uh, not to, to look for such uh, high goals. And then people, they stop dreaming. And uh, this book is for people who don't want to stop uh, to, to dream. Who, people who think that there's something more in their life for them than, than, it is, than they realize right now. It's an interesting one because I think society teaches us that failure is bad and therefore we avoid the risk of failure because we don't want to have the stigma attached to you know, a failure event in our lives. So as you say, avoiding failure can often lead to avoiding success because we're not pushing ourselves. We're not trying to reach that next level. Yes, absolutely. I think uh, you can differentiate between two groups of people. The one group of people, they have only their first priority is uh, to avoid uh, failure and the, the other group of people is uh, are those people who want to be uh, successful and mm -hmm. if it's only your pr priority uh, that you don't want to make uh, any mistakes yes then you will never be successful i have uh, some quotes there from successful entrepreneurs uh, who are very smart and uh, told their uh, employees if you want to give make career in our company or go forward in life you have to make more mistakes sure of course not always the same mistakes this is uh, stupid yes but uh, i think it's no problem uh, if you uh, make uh, any mistakes and and the the key message is that you should start for for uh, higher goals and uh, in the same way as i say have said this it's important to learn from other from other people. I think this is something we can learn from Asian people. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very uh, often in, uh, in Asia, like in China or in Korea, and speak there with people, and uh, they... They, they are not, 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 not arrogant. They, they want to learn from everyone else. Uh, for example, a lot of my books are translated it's, uh, in, in China because they are curiously mm -hmm. to learn about it. And they invite me to, to have lectures there. And, and people in the United States, sometimes they are different. They are some like, uh, I know it all and uh, there's uh, no one else who can, uh, who can teach me uh, anything. And I think it has something to do with the philosophy of uh, uh, Confucius, uh, who told the people always there are different ways uh, to learn. Sure, you can make your own experience, and it's necessary to, to make your own experience, but uh, it's not uh, necessary to make all the mistakes everyone else had made in his all, uh, whole life. You can learn from other people as well. This is something you can learn from Asian people and from the Americans. You can learn something else, what you, uh, 
what you mentioned before, the attitude to, to failure. Because I think in America, it's not such a big problem if you founded a company and then you fail. And okay, then you start again. Maybe you fail as well. Then you start again. But I don't know how it is uh, with you in the UK or in, in Europe in general, but I can say in Germany where I'm living, it's always if someone uh, f failed uh, in, in his life with his company, uh, people are a little bit skeptical and mm -hmm. speak uh, negative. Oh, look, uh, 15 years ago, he, he, he failed. What's, what's wrong uh, with him? And so I think you can learn Uh, different uh, things from different cultures and this is the reason why I have uh, a lot of uh, different quotes as well from Asian uh, philosophers and from uh, Americans and from uh, Euro Europeans and this is another aspect uh, of the book you can uh, put uh, the, the best of all uh, together to, to learn from all of them. Now we, we're living in very interesting times at the moment <laughs> we're in the middle of a global pandemic how would you say we can use the wisdom in this book to guide us through those challenging times i have one one favorite quote as well uh, in this book uh, that that is um, always try uh, to differentiate between things that you can change and that you cannot change and try to accept these things that you can't change and focus on those things that you are able to change. Mm -hmm. And for example, mm -hmm. if there is a p pandemic now, it's it's bad for, for everyone, but it makes no sense. Uh, and uh, I don't do it to, to think all of the time, oh, how, how, how bad it is, or to look for people who are guilty. This is, uh, for example, uh, that very bad thing you can see everywhere in the world. I don't know how it is with you in the UK, for example, here in Germany, people look for Bill Gates as a scapegoat. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of very crazy conspiracy uh, theories because they look always for someone they could blame for us or he caused the coronavirus uh, a, a, a pandemic or in the United States uh, the scapegoats are uh, Asian people sometimes even Asian people uh, got, uh, attacked on the street and so crazy people because they uh, say this is a China virus and so and uh, I think this makes no sense to look for, for scapegoats to look for people who are uh, 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 guilty and so uh, find a way maybe even in, in every bad situation there can be an advantage on the other side. I will give you one example. Uh, a friend of mine uh, he uh, usually um, he um, he makes big uh, congresses and you know with uh, sometimes thousands or ten thousand uh, people there he's a, a speaker and he invites uh, other speaker uh, speakers there and uh, sure now it's uh, it's not uh, possible but uh, he had a plan uh, he had a plan before it's about a, a platform for digital learning and uh, uh, it, it was always an idea but Exactly today, he started with this platform. Maybe otherwise, mm. it would have been only some years later, maybe. But uh, now he had to do something. And uh, this is uh, as well something that you can learn from this book. And I have a, a lot of uh, quotes uh, uh, in this book. In, in every crisis or in every setback, on the other hand, there is a big uh, opportunity And you see it if you analyze the lives of successful people like uh, Rockefeller, for example, or like um, uh, Warren Buffett. Uh, all of them had a lot of uh, challenges in their life, uh, crisis in, in uh, society or in the economy or even a personal uh, crisis. But, um, and, and sure, if you are confronted with such things, I, I, I think it's, it's human that you are uh, depressed and that you are sad. But the, the question is, how long? Is mm -hmm. it maybe only for, for some hours or some, a couple of days? Or is it for a month or even for, for years? Uh, we, we, can't, uh, we can't change this, uh, that, uh, that we are always confronted with uh, problems in our life. And even I think we need problems sometimes because only if we are challenged with problems, we take 
the next steps or problems are nothing bad. Problems are good and you have to learn to embrace problems. I, I had it in my life as well sometimes. For example, uh, some years ago, uh, the most important uh, manager in my company had left my uh, company, told me that he wanted to uh, quit and he wanted to to um, establish his own company. And before this, uh, some uh, other managers of mine uh, had left my company. But then at this time, I saw how to turn this bad thing in something good. And, 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 I, and only a few minutes after he told me about this uh, shocking information the first time, I asked him, what, what do you think about that, that you buy Uh, my company and six weeks uh, later he, he uh, it was very very fast he he, he bought my uh, camp uh, he, he bought my uh, uh, company in spite of the fact that he had no money but the, the bank gave him uh, enough money to buy my company and so this was a real opportunity for me because uh, I was a little bit uh, uh, it was a little bit boring for me in the last years with my company and I had a lot of other ideas what I have to do but uh, There was this this external shock, and, uh, and this made me think how how to react. And I reacted with a with a new idea, and I saw a new opportunity for my life. And now everyone is happy. He's happy because he's entrepreneur now. The employees are happy because I was a difficult boss, and he's he's not. And I'm happy because I can do what I like. I travel all over the world, like in, in Asia or in the uh, United States, give my lectures, uh, writing my books. And uh, and so you see it with a, a lot of people who su uh, were very successful later in life, that it started with a crisis. For example, take Michael Bloomberg. He's mm. one of the richest uh, men in the in the world today with a uh, $61 uh, billion uh, dollar net worth. But all started when he uh, when he had to leave his uh, 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 company and he got a, a compensation for with uh, $10 million uh, uh, for this time. But he used it as a start uh, capital and founded his own great uh, company and today is one of the richest uh, men in the world. You don't know what would have happened uh, if he could have worked on the, in this company as an employee. So uh, so this is what, 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 what I, I want to tell, tell people. Stop looking for scapegoats. Stop, mm. stop uh, blaming external circumstances and blaming Uh, uh, other other people. Uh, today we have a lot of people who want to be a victim. They see themselves as a victim, maybe of capitalism, of society, or their education, or uh, what uh, whatever. And uh, th these people who have this uh, approach to life, they will uh, never be never be successful. Mm, that, I think that's, that's fantastic words of wisdom there. And, and during every crisis, there's always opportunity. It's about our approach. It's about how we how we decide to approach what's going on in life is so important. Rainer, it's lovely to chat to you again. I won't take up too much more of your time. And um, before I let you go, how can we find out more about the book? And also I understand you have a 20 week success program uh, that you offer as well. Yes, uh, sure. You can uh, order it at uh, at uh, Amazon. You can order it at, uh, at Amazon the book. And with a twenty uh, week program, yes, there are uh, three ways you can use the book. The first thing is you can read it like you do usually with books from page one to the last page. But I think this is not the the best idea for this book. The other thing is you take it sometimes, read and think about some some. Uh, Uh, quotes if there is maybe a, a challenge like in uh, health or in uh, 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 profession or in uh, financial aspects and you think about it but there's a third way and there are a lot of people in germany uh, who who do it uh, right now you would take this uh, book and these are this 20 uh, chapters about different topics and then you um, then you meet maybe two or three friends or or even more people who want to be successful and then 
you read this quotes, you read this comments, and then you think about what does it mean for me. The mm -hmm. end of each chapter, uh, I have uh, one or two pages with uh, now. Now it's your turn. Sometimes with recommendation of uh, other books, sometimes with uh, um, advice or suggestions uh, what you can do. And I think this is uh, the, the way uh, people are successful when they read books. Look, no one is successful only because of reading books. Uh, I, I, I can tell you one story, for example, you, you know, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett read always a lot of books. When he was uh, 10 years old, he, uh, he claimed that he uh, read every book book in his uh, the library of his uh, hometown with uh, finance in the title and some some of these books uh, even twice uh, with only uh, uh, 10 years old but he read it in a different way uh, one example maybe you know the a book by uh, Dale Carnegie how to win friends maybe uh, a mm -hmm. lot of people read this book yes, but yeah. he did it he did it in a different way he read exactly this book how to win friends but then he started to make an experiment without uh, uh, um, other people. Uh, 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 he, he let no one know it, but he tried uh, the, what, what Kainige, uh wrote in this book, his recommendations, and in his communication with uh, other people, acting with other people, he tried this advice, and uh, he made always notes whether this worked or not, like mm. a statistic. And in the end, he saw, okay, it works. And I think this is th the way it makes sense to, to read uh, as well this uh, book. It's not only to, 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 to read it and then uh, uh, forget it, but uh, to, to try everything. And uh, if I give you here some, some examples uh, here, you have so many um, different uh, uh, topics like gaining confidence or making decisions, very important thing for a lot of people, how to make decisions. Uh, it's about um, embracing change or mm -hmm. professional success or selling. Selling is very uh, important to have uh, success as an entrepreneur. Or another chapter about uh, making making uh, money or one chapter about envy uh, uh, about how important is focus or the art of self-marketing or how important is to build uh, trust or about taking orders from yourself self-discipline or about healthy thinking healthy uh, uh, living about uh, mistakes and so on and about uh, in the last chapter uh, keeping your your worries at bay so th these are a lot of different uh, uh, topics and if you take every week only one of this topic and you meet with uh, two friends who are uh, that this should be friends who are really ambitious like you are and you talk about what does it mean this quote and maybe you communicate about your own ex experience and you take some of this advice i think this is the way you you have the biggest uh, gain from this uh, mm -hmm. uh, book the, the the biggest profit so actually put the ideas into action learn from them experience yes. them taste them that, that's that's a wonderful wonderful approach to it Raina, thank you so much for your time it's lovely to chat to you as always and i'll put links to the book in the show notes for this episode as well so our, our listeners can find that nice and easily but thank you so much for your time okay thank you very much thank you a big thank you to Raina for joining me today for this rather special episode of Informed Choice Radio. Episode 500 is quite a milestone for any podcast. And at this moment, as well as saying thank you to Raina for joining us, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who listens to Informed Choice Radio, everyone who sends us emails, leaves reviews, engages with us on Twitter and on other social media platforms. It really is a pleasure hosting Informed Choice Radio, getting to speak to so many wonderful guests and authors and experts, all the time about these different areas and not just money but of life and that's really what informed choice radio is designed to be it's a podcast to help you make better decisions with your money but also with your life so a big thank you to everyone who makes that possible i should also say a special thank you to emma hill my sister and also my assistant who serves as podcast producer emma helps me find guests she arranges the interviews with them she prepares questions for me to completely ignore in most cases as i go off on tangents and ask the things i'm really excited about asking during the conversations but emma makes it possible for lots of these conversations to take place and 
has done over many years. So thank you to Emma for all of her help on Informed Choice Radio. Thank you also to my editor, James. James Spooner is a fantastic podcast editor. He works very hard on Informed Choice Radio interviews, but also on the podcast we produce for a wide range of different clients, including Island Influencers, The Soul Millionaire, The Retirement Cafe, many, many others too. So thank you to James as well for your hard work and your efforts on this podcast. But that's it from me for this episode, episode 500. I'm looking forward to the next 500 episodes of Inform Choice Radio as well. I will put a link in the show notes for this episode to Rainer's new book. And I think we'll be having Rainer back on the podcast again soon. That was Rainer's fourth appearance on Inform Choice Radio today. There will be a fifth, I've no doubt at all. He is a prolific author and I absolutely love our conversations with him as well. He always brings lots of knowledge and wisdom to those conversations. So until next time, until the next 500 episodes, I'm Martin Bamford. This is Informed Choice Radio. And remember, when it comes to your money, the more you know, the faster it can grow.